This conference will now be recorded. Is everyone able to see the, the screen? Uh, currently, I have opened the AWS page. So, is it saying? Yes, sir, we are able to see it. Fine, thanks. So, just, just let me know in case there's some disturbance. But anyhow, I'll put everyone on mute. Yeah, thanks, all of you. So, friends, please see this. So, what we are actually trying to do is the artifacts which are created by one job, we want to copy into another job so that the testing job can do the the deployment activity okay to do that just now we installed a plugin called as copy artifact plugin what is the advantage once that plugin is installed if you go to this development job and when you click on configure hi can you repeat that how we can on uh, means download that plugin actually we are unable to see it because of pre see see any plugin deploy installation is just the same what you do is go to the dashboard of Jenkins, click on manage Jenkins. Earlier, yesterday we downloaded and installed a plugin called as, uh, what was the plugin that we installed yesterday? Uh, I think we installed uh, uh, that, uh, what, what was the plugin we installed yesterday? Uh, deploy to container plugin, right? Similarly, today we are installing uh, another plugin. Just come into this manage Jenkins, click on manage plugins. Because I have already installed, it will go into the install section, but in your case, it will be in the available section. So click on this available section and search for copy artifact plugin. In the list of plugins, all you have to do is type copy artifact, it will come up, install it. In my case, it's present in the install section because just two minutes back, I have installed that plugin, okay? And once the plugin is installed, you can go back to the, the dashboard of Jenkins. And what is the advantage? The advantage is, if you go to this development job and click on the configure, this copy artifact plugin will enable you to bundle all the artifacts which are created by a job so that it can be passed to the other job. How do you do that? You go into post build actions and in post build actions, if you just click on this option, you have an option called as archive the artifacts. Again, this archive the artifacts option will be generated on your screen only after we have installed that plugin called as copy artifact plugin prior to that you will not have this okay so just come to this archive the artifact just click on it and then it's asking which type of files do you want to archive archiving as all of you know is nothing but bundling right so which type of files use a regular expression simply say star star slash star dot war i talked about this yesterday also it simply means that in our working directory Development is our workspace. In this workspace, in any folder or subfolder, anywhere, wherever you find any file whose extension is WAR, just bundle all of them. Okay. Once they are bundled, I want to accept them into my testing job. So save this job, go back to the dashboard of Jenkins, and in the dashboard of Jenkins, you go to the, the testing job, click on configure. Okay, and here you go into the build section. In the build section, click on add build step and click on the first option. You see, copy artifacts from another project. Just click on it. And from which project you are trying to copy the artifacts? We are trying to copy the artifacts from the development job. Click on apply. So what is now happening is, whatever war file was created by the development job is becoming available to the testing job. Because continuous testing is over, now I want to deploy that into the production environment. So what we have done yesterday, same thing. Click on post build actions, click on add post build action, deploy war ER container. We have done it, right? Which type of files you are planning to deploy? Star star slash star dot war. Context path, which means once it goes live into the production servers, what name do you want to give? I will give the name as prod env, anything you can give, okay? And then you click on add container. We are using Tomcat 8 as all of you know. And then it's asking for Tomcat 8 credentials. Okay. And then Tomcat 8 URL, which is running on the production environment. So I'll, I'll come here. This is my prod server. I need to capture the, the IP address of that machine. So you just click on the prod server. And in the bottom, it will show you the IP. I can take the private IP because the deployment is happening within the same network. HTTP and the port number of 
Tomcat is also 8080. Finish. Click on apply and click on save. Finish friends. CACD on a basic level is over. On a basic level. Okay. Now, if I run this development job, you know, it will perform the first three stages. Download the code, build the code, deploy the code. And immediately, it will call this testing job. This testing job, what it is doing, it is downloading the Selenium automation programs created by the testers, executing those programs, and then it is deploying into the production environment. Let's run it. I'm running the dev job. Please watch. The development job execution has started. It's running for the ninth time. Once it's over in the build queue, you should see the testing job. Do you see the testing job? That's also going to start now. It will, it will, it does not take much time. If you refresh the page, you can see that the testing job is currently executing for the fourth time. Finish. It's done. It's it's almost over. Now, this is CI CD on a basic level. I mean, don't don't think that we can crack an interview with this kind of CI CD. No. When you go for an interview, what they concentrate in Jenkins is uh, you know advanced concepts like how to work on distributed Jenkins build where we create master slaves etc which we, we are going to see tomorrow and they will concentrate on what is called as pipeline whatever CI CD we have seen the same steps we will perform but not through the GUI that we have uh, done till now everything is created through a file which is called as a Jenkins file which is created using groovy code and that is what primarily they'll concentrate but the basics of everything is what we have seen these are the five stages but the process i have shown you this is not how it is done it's done through a jenkins file that we are yet to learn but only when you understand the basic concept you can really understand how pipeline works so that is why we have been spending so much time trying to understand how the gua of jenkins works now let's quickly do all these five stages that we have been doing since the last three days please concentrate those of you who missed something or did not understand you'll see that in the next five minutes i'll automate all the five stages okay just concentrate the first thing we started off with we clicked on new item we created some job i can give any name i am giving the name as dev01 okay and which type of project initially it's only freestyle projects okay click on freestyle projects click on okay now what are we supposed to do we know that we are there are five stages we are trying to uh, perform download the code created by the developers build that code when you build the code uh, artifact is generated this artifact to deploy into the testing environment once it is deployed into the testing environment run the testing programs and if the testing passes deploy that into the the production environment okay uh, so uh, definitely morally that's that's not a problem we'll definitely resolve that issue in case the lab setup is not working we'll, we'll fix that okay so just click on source code management okay the precondition is the development team should have already created some code and uploaded that code into the the github repository okay so you come to this repository i told you that this maven project is something it's containing some java code which i downloaded from google and i uploaded into the git repository you people imagine that this is just done by the developers developers are creating some code uploading that into the repository and giving you the url so just, just click on this project and okay once i click on that project you can yeah once you click on the project all you have to do is click on clone or download copy whatever link is getting generated and we should ask our jenkins to download that okay so click on get and paste the the url over here okay and once it is done uh click on apply the next thing that we do is go into the build section click on add build step and click on invoke top level maven targets okay and here i told you that there, there are seven stages in the maven life cycle out of which package is a stage where the code will be converted into an artifact so give that package stage and then click on add post build actions deploy war er to container once the artifact is created we want this artifact to be deployed into the testing service so star star slash star dot war then we will say 
you can give any name any name you can give i have given the name as testy nv you want you can give some other name also add container you give tomcat 8 over there and then remember tomcat 8 credentials which have which we have entered in the tomcat users.xml file that you enter and here you say http specify the ip address of the qa server whatever is our qa server in my case this is my qa server so just take its ip see this is the private ip i'll go with the private ip and the port number is 8080 click on apply click on save so just now i have created a job called as dev01 when this dev01 job is executed it is going to do the first three stages download the code build the code and deploy the code then i will create one more job see i'll call this job as test01 any names we can give right some meaningful names click on freestyle project click on okay now our requirement here is this the automation testing team will create some testing programs we want jenkins to download those programs okay we want jenkins to download those programs and we want jenkins to uh, just a second yeah we want jenkins to download those programs and run those programs so in order to do that what i will do is i just click on this clone or download copy the url that is getting generated and go to source code management click on get and paste that url here okay that's the first activity and once that is done the next activity is we want to run those programs right identify the workspace first because i already told you yesterday that what the testers will do is along with hey, wait 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 i think i downloaded the wrong project testing project i told you is present in a, a folder called as functional testing i am sorry this is the repository that we need to download sorry this is where the testers have put the testing related programs so i would like to download that sorry so i'll i'll go back to the the configuration page wow you know this happens because the way i started jenkins is using java hyphen jar command I already told you yesterday that there are different ways in which it can be installed, which we'll see later, wherein you don't get this kind of problem. And you don't even need to give this Java hyphen jar Jenkins.org every time. Once you start Jenkins, automatically you will see that once you start the Linux server, automatically Jenkins will come. So again, I give the command java hyphen jar Jenkins dot. Once my Jenkins comes into running condition, okay so i'll enter the username password and then we'll click on the the sign in button fine i think we were actually trying to create this testing job but uh jenkins server got disconnected so go to the configuration page of that testing job test 01 is the name i have given now and we want this job to download the automation programs functional testing programs created by the testers so this is the url i will take that url paste that url over here so that my jenkins will be able to download all the automation testing programs where it is downloading i already told you yesterday that the testers along with creating the automation programs what they have done is they have created a jar file called testing.jar you can run this jar file using the command java hyphen jar and the name of the jar so that the testing programs would be executed and you know all those activities which are per present will be performed okay so please watch uh, once that is done once my job has executed and it has uh, downloaded all the programs let's see whether the job 
is executed or not. No, I did not even build the job. So I'll run the job once, test zero one job. So the test one job has executed. Do you want to see the logs? As always, to see the logs, you click on this number, the latest build number, and you click on console output. Console output, it says that the, the workspace where all these things are happening is home, Ubuntu, Jenkins, workspace, a folder called as test zero one. This path I wanted. So I'll take that path, and again, I'll go to the configuration page of the same job. We will execute that jar file. Simply go into build section, click on add build step, and then click on execute shell. Okay, and the command we are going to give is java hyphen jar, the complete location where this jar file is downloaded, and the name of the jar file. This will ensure that the testing programs are executed, the Selenium automation programs are executed. The next thing we did was the dev job we have linked with the testing job the dev 01 job once it is executed automatically should call the test 01 job to do that what we have done was we went into the dev 01 job we clicked on configure okay and go into the post build actions in the post build actions click on add post build action click on build other projects which project you are trying to start once this is over we want to call test 01 so once the dev 01 job is over automatically it will call test 01 job okay then click on apply and then there's one more thing we want to do the artifacts created by the dev 01 job we want to archive all of them so that we can pass it to the test 01 job okay to do that we go again into the same post build section and you click on add post build actions click on uh, archive the artifacts and what is the type of files we are trying to archive? Star star slash star dot war. This is all the files which are having the war extension. I want to archive them. Once they are archived, we should pass them into the test zero one job. So come back to the dashboard of Jenkins, go to the, the test zero one job, click on configure. This last 10 minutes, what we have seen, if you just practice this, this is what we have been doing then since the last three days. You go into the build section. In the build section, click on add build step and click on copy artifacts from another project. From which project we are trying to copy the artifacts? From dev01. Okay, click on apply. Once you get hold of the artifacts, the testing, the test01 job wants to deploy this into the, the production environment. So click on add post build action, click on deploy war ER to container and which type of files. Again, the same drama. But this time the production environment information prod env add container i'll call it as tomcat 8 and tomcat 8 credentials and here you give the ip address of the the production server this is my prod server just click on it and pick up its ip And the port number is 8080. Finish. Click on apply. Click on save. It's over. Now, if you go back to the dashboard of Jenkins and if you simply run this dev01 job, it will perform the first three stages and then it will call the, the test01 job, which will perform the next two stages. This is CICD on a basic level. Let us also check whether the deployment into the production server was really successful or not. What we have seen yesterday in the QA server, the same page I should see in the prod server. But because I'm trying to access it from my browser, I will go with public IP instead of private IP. Okay, so just give that public IP colon port number 8080. This will take you to the Tomcat. And on this Tomcat, what name did we give for that application that we deployed? Prod ENP. You can give any name. You see, that application got deployed. Now, this is a simple Java application, so you're just getting a username password field. Irrespective of that, you might have a very big complex application. The deployment process is just the same. Once the artifact is put into Tomcat, out comes the web page, and you know you should be able to work on it. Basically, this is how it works. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. So, so where 
in which environment this testing code is getting executed? Uh, no, no, your voice is actually uh, coming with a lot of disturbance. Uh, can you speak a little louder, please? There's some bad news. Uh, am I audible now? I mean, yeah, it's better. Tell me. Yeah, so I'm asking where this testing code is getting executed because we haven't given any uh, environment there. So it is, I guess, uh, executing on development environment only, right? No, 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 no. You understand, Selenium. Probably if you want, I'll actually show it to you, Sunny. I'll uh, open the testing scripts and I'll show it to you tomorrow. If you understand, Selenium, the, the testing program that we have downloaded from the GitHub repository, in that Selenium program, the testing team has given the IP address of the QA server. Okay, my QA server, which is running on some particular uh, IP address, right? The Selenium testing program is triggered to work on this. So how, for example, when you open a browser and you open google.com, what will happen? Google page will open, right? Similarly, in the Selenium testing programs, they have given the IP address of the QA server. So my testing program is going to the QA server, some testing code it is executing, and then if it's passed, it's showing you the result as passed. Finish. That's the responsibility of the tester. That's what I'm saying. You don't need to worry about that. Though if you want, I'll actually open the Selenium. So program. that uh, address is parameterized in the testing code, right? No, no, so I didn't. Can we see, can we see that uh, in the logs somewhere? What? What? That uh, IP address of your server where that test code is no, getting uh, No, it's not shown. It's not shown. But if you want, I can actually change the program, the Selenium program in such a way that it will show the logs also. Currently, the Selenium program that I have used is just going to a particular URL. It's checking those applications and simply giving you the message as testing passed. But if your intention is you want my Selenium program to print what is the QA server's URL and all that, I can just make those changes in the program and when you run the testing program, it will do that also. That, that can be done. But what I want you people to focus at this point of time is creating the testing program according to your requirements, whatever you are saying. That's the job of the tester. What we are primarily focused in is we are trying to understand how those the testing code can be downloaded and how the testers they are just creating a jar file and you are simply asking your Jenkins to run that jar file, nothing more than that. In the testing program, whatever customizations you want to do, maybe you can ask the Selenium automation testers and they should be able to do it. Your criteria is only to run that program via java-jar testing.jar. Okay. But I I show that also. I, mean, I show that kind of scenario also where if you want, I ask my Selenium print the required URL and whatever customization. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Fine. So friends, this is uh, CI CD on a basic note. Now, in this CI CD, there are a lot of other things that can be done. Like currently, what is happening is you are opening the dashboard of Jenkins and you are running the job. Right? When you click on that, the job is getting executed. But imagine that in your organization, uh, you want to schedule this job. Schedule this job in the sense, this job should be automatically executed at a particular date and time. Just imagine in your organization, every Friday evening, 6 o'clock, you want to run this CIC, something like that. Okay, just give me a second. My laptop is, okay, I'll just go the charge. Imagine that in your organization, your requirement is you want to schedule this build automatically to a particular date and time. For example, this development job should be triggered at a date and time. I don't require a Jenkins admin to sit on his computer and click on this build icon. Automatically, the job should be triggered. Now, if that is your requirement, that can also be done. How do you do that? See, first of all, you understand that all these servers, AWS machines that we have created, are running not in in our location they are running in north virginia so based on that north virginia timestamp i have to uh, identify and i have to tell at which date and time you would like to execute so i quickly connect to that machine and first of all let us find what is the the timestamp of that particular server 
Okay, just a second. So I'll uh, just try to connect to that machine. So you know what, from tomorrow onwards, uh, because uh, in order to proceed with the advanced concepts of Jenkins, it's mandatory that you should also have some basic understanding of Linux. So part of our session from tomorrow would be, we'll be trying to concentrate on Linux also, okay? Because what we have seen in Jenkins till now was basically uh, through GUI. So we never faced big challenges, right? Uh, but the, the advanced concepts that we want to implement, they require some good understanding of Linux. So parallelly, we'll be spending some time trying to understand Linux. And of course, parallelly, we'll also be going with the, the Jenkins also. Okay, so just execute a command called date. It says that currently on this North Virginia server, the day is Tuesday, June 25th, 1 12 27. I mean, uh, 1, 1 o'clock in the night, 12 minutes, 27 seconds, UTC. That's the timestamp. Fine, doesn't matter. Now, once I identify that, what I will do is I'll come to the dashboard of Jenkins and I'll go to my job. Whichever job I want to execute, I'll just click on that job. And in this job, please see, how do you execute this job automatically at a particular date and time? You click on build triggers and then we click on build periodically. Just click on build periodically. Then it's asking you to schedule. How do you schedule? Very simple. Click on this question mark. They will show you what are the arguments we need to give. For example, when I click on that question mark, you can clearly see that the first thing you are supposed to give is minutes then hours, day of month, month, day of week. These are the five arguments we need to give. Minutes. If you look, if, if you see, currently it shows that the minutes is 12 minutes, right? I want to execute in another three minutes, okay? So I give the minutes as 15. And the, the hour of the day, what was the hour of the day as we have seen in our date command? Then the next one is day of the month. Please see what is the, the day that it was showing over here. It shows this as June 25th. So I'll give the day of the month as 25 and then it is asking month since it is June the number is 6 and then the day of the week where 0 starts with Sunday whereas this fellow is saying that today is Tuesday in their calendar. If 0 is Sunday, Tuesday will be what? 0, 1, 2. Tuesday will be 2, right? So just give that number 2. You know what that means? In exactly click on apply, click on save. Now you come back to the Jenkins server, see what is the date and time here. It's already 1.14. Once it becomes 1.15, immediately my development job will trigger. Just wait for another few seconds. This is a Linux server. Parallelly, I'm just opening that so that we can execute the date command. See, it's already 43 seconds. Another 10 seconds, automatically you will see the without anyone clicking, the development job should get triggered. It's done. So now the development job should be triggered. Please watch. The development job has executed nine times. Now it is trying to execute for the 10th time. Can you see over here? So this is how you can actually specifically tell that this job should run at a, a particular date and time. Now what I want all of you to do is, when I actually gave you the, the definition of CICD, this was not what I told. What I told you on the first session of Jenkins is, I told you, you know, this was a diagram. I mean, we have set up this complete architecture, but only one thing is missing from what I have actually uh, told you. I said that you have uh, three servers, which we have created, dev, the second one is QA, and the next one was prod. Developers are putting some code into the, the Git repository. This is the developer's responsibility. And I said that through Jenkins, I should download that code, that first stage continuous download. Then you create a artifact. We have seen that artifact was coming in the format of a war file. That second stage we call as continuous build. And then Jenkins should deploy that artifact into the testing servers. We called it as continuous deployment. Jenkins should pick up the automation testing programs and it should test this application, fourth stage continuous testing, and if everything is okay, put it into the production environment, continuous delivery. 
we have done all these things but one thing i skipped is in this definition i told you that whenever developer makes any modifications to the code and uploads those modifications immediately jenkins should trigger all these activities but currently what we are doing either we are opening jenkins and we are manually running the job or else you are scheduling the job for a particular date and time i said that on this particular minute at this particular day you execute it no this is not what is ci cd ci cd is the moment the developer is making any modifications and pushing those modifications into the the version controlling system immediately jenkins should trigger all these activities so what i want you to do is just do a little bit of google search come up with solutions how you can do that i mean no need to have step by step information because anyhow i'll show you but what google says what do you find you know you'll get a better understanding when i explain that tomorrow okay now for today i want to stop the class a little early uh, just just concentrate on what has been taught till today and morally you know whatever mistake has been done regarding the notes and uh, the, the whatever i'll just talk to the administration we'll see that uh, the step by step notes and everything would be given to you uh, to all of you all the students that should not be a problem and if, as i told you from tomorrow onwards part of our session would also be concentrating on linux because without having linux knowledge we can we can't really concentrate on no, I mean, we can't really I, and, yeah. yeah what we will do is we will do the labs tomorrow each of us independently while you instruct and some of them who get stuck they can share the screens and share and get the solution then and there because only then uh, the advanced class we can understand unless we practice the labs uh it will be very morally. difficult to get knowledge yeah that's true morally that's true but you know what we will do is uh, uh you know it's, it's not really possible for me to sit in the lab when each and every person is practicing it might take a lot of time but what i will do is instead of going into advanced concepts which might create more confusion for you i i, I of course i'll work on jenkins only but we will give some time what i want to do is i i i ensure that all of you will get the notes just try to do as much practice as you can today itself if someone is stuck up at any of those points i'll log into your machines and i'll see what is the problem but just go through the notes and start off with the practice at least a few steps let's say there are five stages in ci cd try to do at least one or two stages on your own let's say the third stage is not working i'll log in into your machine i'll see what is the problem we haven't got the notes uh, at all so not, not even the links i no i I'll, I'll, i'll talk to the management because i was not informed yesterday when i talked they told that they have already sent the notes but i'll just talk to the management and i uh, will resolve that issue yeah krishna can you show one the notes how it did look like uh i it's in their drive i think uh, uh, who is asking prasanna prasanna i am it's prem prem uh, you know it's actually in their drive uh, I, i i don't even have access on that drive but that's what i'll 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 ensure that you will get it today in case you don't get it you know probably i'll, I'll definitely I'll, you'll you'll get the notes i'll talk to the, that man yeah, i will by notes i will get put in the drive yeah i will get yesterday but i unable to means uh, require means unable to map the thing with the videos means it's looks oh. like some other class notes fine fine i i i just see what is the issue i'll see what is the issue okay fine i okay. i see don't worry i'll i'll try we try to fix all those issues today okay thank you